With interest rates on the rise and the Fed expected to hike by another quarter point tomorrow, many investors are looking to diversify into alternative assets. For more on the outlook for credit and distressed debt, let's bring in Michael Arigetti, the co-founder, CEO, and president of Aries Management. Michael, great to see you again. Good to be here in Miami. Nice um, to see you guys. How does your world change with the Fed raising rates? It's a two-edged sword. So yeah. if you think about what we do, we have $340 billion of assets under management. Well over 200 is credit. And the bulk of those exposures are floating rate, whether it's a real estate loan, a corporate loan, an infrastructure loan. So interestingly, as rates have been going up, our investors have actually been making more money. The challenge comes is if the rate hikes persist, then debt service becomes an issue. So there's a balancing act here and, and a balance needs to get struck. But for the time being, it's been, you know, for the most part, a big positive for the business. So it's almost like it's Goldilocks for you right now, where, where yeah. rates are high enough where you can take advantage of it, but not high, too it's, high where it it's hurts. It's a very unique setup. Normally when we're talking about recession and economic weakness, we've already seen earnings recess and rates are coming down. So we really haven't seen this environment where we're seeing fundamental strength in the portfolio and rates are going up. So if you're an investor in private credit or tradable credit even, you're enjoying base rate increases for 12 months before you're even having a conversation about inability to pay. Yeah, I would imagine the last 13, 14 months is where you've proven yourself, but you talked about it. There's that point of diminishing marginal returns in terms of yields. What is that point? Because I'm sure you game it out. Yeah, I think it depends. It, it's, it's a grid, right? It depends on what happens with earnings and where rates go. Each market is leveraged slightly differently. So for leveraged loans, private and traded, coverage right now is about two turns. So if we're talking about another 50 from here, I think the market's going to be okay. If for whatever reason we're now off, off trend and we see higher, then you'll start to see some challenges. Okay. Karen's got a question for Michael. Karen? Yeah. Uh, hi, Michael. Thanks for being on. Um, are you starting to, to see, see any pickup in PE activity that was, you know, sort of slowed down at the end of the year? And if so, is the capital structure more conservative than it used to be? Yeah, so we're seeing a slight pickup in activity. Obviously, there's been a lot of price discovery over the last 9 to 12 months. Bid-ask spreads are coming in. Uh, the interesting thing about private equity is in these funds, there's a time frame to invest. So the longer you go without investing, I think the market will try to recalibrate and, and be active again. What we have seen is while we're going through this price discovery is people have been active within their existing portfolios. So if you were in the old valuation environment, you're probably trying to buy down your multiple right now by tucking in acquisitions and putting money into the existing portfolio while you wait for equity values to reprice. Where are you finding value right now, Michael? You were talking to me earlier uh, about some po pockets in real estate, commercial real estate specifically. Yeah, I think real estate is probably going to take it on the chin the most with yeah. regard to the rate increases. When you move away from multis and industrial, which fortunately is where we've been concentrated, you've got structural headwinds in retail and office, and you've got capital structures that are going to be challenged to digest the new cost of capital. So I think that value transfer from real estate equity to real estate debt, call it opportunistic real estate, is going to be a really, really interesting investment opportunity over the next 12 to 24 months. How do you, does a recession matter? I mean, we're so fixated on the notion of a soft landing or hard landing in, in, in the areas that you invest, you would think that that matters. But does that matter in the way you invest? It, it matters, but the way most private markets investors approach investing is we're investing with five to ten year horizons so we have to be macro aware but we've got to be perfect on the micro um, it's so interesting because when you're in the liquid markets we talk about recession but no one really talks about how long how severe where does it hit and and this is interesting too because we're seeing recession in different sectors of the economy and different sectors of the market so this even if we have a recession I think it's going to feel a little bit different than than prior yeah and then just quickly, Michael, because we're almost out of time, within alternatives, there are alternatives. And so one of the areas that you're investing in is sports franchises, yes. which I thought was very interesting. Yeah. The returns have been phenomenal over the past decade. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating. We, we've been investing in and around the sports media landscape for 25 years. We stood up a, a dedicated business at the beginning of COVID with a view that distress from COVID with people not showing up at stadiums and spending money would actually challenge sports assets. That lasted for about six months and I think the long-term secular theme of 
unscripted content, live entertainment, hang out with your friends and spend money. That's been that's been ripping, and so it's a pretty pretty fun place to invest. And it's a it's a really interesting non-correlated asset class right now. Yeah, Michael, yeah. great to have you with us. Thanks good to see you guys. Thank you. Thanks Michael for having Arigetti me. Michael uh, Aries Management. Tim.